This video is going to introduce the physics behind optical tweezers as well as some of their experimental applications. Arthur Ashkin won half of the 2018 Nobel Prize in Physics for the optical tweezers and their application to biological systems. Back in 1986, following years of fascination of light pressure, Ashkin invented the first ever single beam gradient force optical trap. To understand how this optical trap works, let's consider a glass bead placed at the optical axis of a laser with a Gaussian intensity distribution. A photon carries momentum with it and transfers this to the bead on impact. Rays of light will also refract for the bead and their change in momentum will produce a force. However, since the Gaussian beam is symmetric, these forces will cancel and the net force will be along the optical axis due to the scattering of incident photons. If instead we consider a bead located off-center, the incident rays will have different intensities. When the rays emerge, they will have more downward momentum, so to conserve momentum, the bead will experience an equal upward force pushing it towards the region of maximum intensity. The force felt by the bead is called the gradient force. It is important to note that the force experienced by the particle is proportional to the distance from the optical axis, much like the spring force. Also, the gradient force depends on the refractive index, meaning optically denser particles will be trapped more strongly. Ashkin developed a two-beam optical trap but the scattering forces from two lasers would cancel and the particle would be trapped in the center. He then worked on an optical levitation trap where the particle's weight would balance the scattering force. This, however, would not be stable if moved, so he kept experimenting. In 1986, he designed a laser trap containing a microscope objective with a very strong lens, which would produce a strongly focused laser beam. This created a large power gradient both axially and radially about the beam's focus. When a bead is placed in the trap, it will experience a scattering force. However, a little downstream of the focus, this will balance with the gradient force, and the bead will stay in a stable equilibrium. This was Ashkin's experimental setup, taken from his paper in 1986. A bead would be introduced into the tweezer by optical levitation. He demonstrated it was possible to trap particles with sizes ranging from 10 micrometers to 25 nanometers. This range includes large particles like bacteria and much smaller submicron particles. Particles much larger than the wavelength of laser light can be treated in the Mie regime, where ray optics can explain the behavior of the particle. However, for submicron Rayleigh particles, we need to consider the wave optics picture. When the diameter of the particle is much smaller than the wavelength of light, light must be modeled as an electromagnetic wave. Consider a non-uniform electric field, where the dielectric bead is modeled as a dipole in the field. The induced dipole is proportional to the electric field itself, so the force will have this form. Since intensity is proportional to the electric field squared, we find that our force is proportional to the gradient of the intensity, i.e. the force guides the bead towards the maximum field intensity. The two size regimes are consistent, which is to be expected. So, what can we use these tweezers for? They can very accurately measure forces on the order of piconewtons, the trapping principles apply to a wide range of particles, and if operated at a safe power, the laser doesn't damage biological structures. One experiment looked at the mechanism of DNA transcription by attaching a DNA template strand to a bead held in a stiff trap, and the RNA polymerase enzyme to a bead held in a weak trap. As the RNA moved along the strand, scientists were able to analyze the motion and found that it transcribed roughly one nucleotide per second. Optical tweezers are an invaluable tool in a wide range of fundamental biological studies. However, despite their clear usefulness in the biological sciences, Ashkin's dream was to trap atoms. Modifications on the original design has allowed that to be possible, and optical tweezer arrays are a promising tool for physics research. Very recently, a group has been able to isolate and organize rubidium atoms more efficiently thanks to an optical tweezer array. Stable lattices like this can be used to test interesting effects like quantum entanglement. Optical tweezers have a far reach in modern scientific research, so many interesting applications might be yet to come. We include the references in the description and encourage you to find out more.